Uh, hi everyone, this is Matanda. Welcome all of to my channel. So here I have with a new session. So in this session, I'll discuss the uh, BSC scientific officer interview experience of Smuti Bhai. So Smuti Bhai is one of my senior who is currently uh, working as a research scholar in Department of Physics in IIT Kharagpur. So basically, Smuti Bhai is working in a condensed matter experimental uh, condensed matter group in IIT Kharagpur. So he was appeared for BRC uh, scientific officer interview in this 2021 uh, for the very first time. So here he discussed every questions with me and how was his experience inside the hall. So uh, let's have the discussion on this on his interview experience. So here I have taken some questions from atomic molecular physics. Basically, the people asked a very few few questions from atomic molecular physics actually. So they asked about the energy level difference of a helium atom, helium plus atom, and hydrogen atom. This is very genuine. As you know, energy of uh, hydrogen atom is minus thirteen point six in mean square. But for hydrogen atom, uh, like atom, it will be uh, multiplied with z square. So you can calculate it easily. Uh, then the write the ground state wave function of both the helium plus atom and hydrogen atom. This is also very general. For the hydrogen atom, that is 1, 0, 0 state. The wave function is 1 by pi naught q, uh, root over e to the power minus r by n naught. But in case of helium, it will be just 2 r by n naught because minus r z by n naught. Uh, but the next question is very uh, important. The question was from positron atom. As you know, it is a antiparticle of free electron. Okay. So radius mass will be m1 m2 by m1 plus m2. So it will be 1 by 2. But the energy of the hydrogen atom is proportional to mu. So if you calculate the energy of positron, then energy of the hydrogen atom. So it will be like 1 by so, if you asked about the ground state energy of positron atom, this is a basic question. It is asked several times. Last year, the easiest question was from this concept. So, energy ground state energy of positron atom, it will be minus 13.6 by 2. That is minus 6.8 electron. Okay. So, this is the question from atomic molecular physics. You can say this was question was, this section was very cool and very uh, sort kind of uh, easy. Uh, in the interview, but the next portion was from condensed matter physics, and each post, uh, in this uh, portion was very uh, you can say hectic, uh, like uh, the people uh, uh, push him into very deeper and deeper uh, in order to uh, relate the research activities with the condensed matter physics and uh, in order to uh, extract the thinking from his mind. So the people basically uh, asked about the very advanced topic like uh, piezoelectric, pyroelectric metal, that is the class of uh, Electric matter or dielectric matter, uh, then they relate about the monoatomic and diatomic lattice. But the uh, lattice vibration is very basic, but the question was very deep. So, I will discuss after. So, uh, exact question was there. So, first of all, they uh, asked a question from glass and quartz. So, I mentioned several times the people are very clever. Do they suppose they want to uh, uh, take you into the XRD? Uh, XRD. So, they do not. Uh, ask you the question from the uh, study directly so basically they will uh, relate the concept uh, from anywhere and uh, this concept is linked to xrd so be careful so the people asked about the uh, difference between glass and quartz so as per you know you can uh, you can uh, differentiate this glass and quartz glass is basically amorphous quartz is its crystal energy so uh, you can difference both the glass and quartz from the xrd so if you do xrd uh, since glass is a amorphous, you will get the very uh, zigzag like a irregular pattern XRD intensity versus 2 theta. But in case of quartz, you will get the single crystal peak. So it will be crystal entity. So you will get the very sharp peak intensity and 2 theta. Okay, this is for quartz and this is for glass. So once we answer like that, uh, we have to use the XRD in order to know this. So the people uh, ask very question, uh, several questions from XRD, very basic and important questions from XRD. So, XRD is very important if you are appearing for the BRC interview. And then the people asked about the piezo and pyroelectric material. So, they asked about the piezo and pyroelectric material. As you know, piezoelectric is a class of uh, dielectric material in which you have to apply the pressure on the material. So, you will obtain the voltage on the material. So, polarization is there. So, pyroelectric material is also dielectric material in which if you maintain two. Uh, temperature gradient in between two edges of the material then you will obtain the voltage drop in between two edges okay so this is also a class of dielectric material and the very details is there 
then they asked about to got a relationship between pressure and voltage okay this is important and uh, smooth wave was struggle in this question so next uh, was this person relation between the mono for monoatomic and diatomic lattice vibration and uh, how to draw the dispersion relation as you know this is very basic uh, for monoatomic lattice vibration the if you ask to draw the uh, lattice uh, uh, brillon sorry dispersion relation that is uh, between k k and uh, e okay and basically it is the ek relationship in between first brillon zone it will be like this okay this will like this okay so here is no band gap of course but in diatomic lattice uh, you will got like there is optical branches like this is optical branch this is acoustical branch and this is the band gap in the material okay and uh, a very nice question was asked to him that uh, this question was repeated for many students so they asked basically why you are not getting any kind of band gap in the monoatomic no no the question was exactly uh, suppose uh, suppose what happens uh, in monoatomic your relation uh, dispersion relations uh, was like this but in diatomic you are getting like this optical branch is there and the acoustical branch is there so uh, why this is so why band gap is occurring in the diatomic molecule and not occurring in the monoatomic molecule okay and he asked about you know the band gap is is proportional to ratio of the masses okay ratio of the masses in the diatomic molecule so whenever both the mass of the diatomic molecule become equal band gap vanishes is become zero so he asked physically that what happened what is going on when the mass become equal band gap is become zero so in the monoatomic case uh, masses are equal but there is no band gap okay so why this is so in diatomic molecule uh, you are getting band gap in monoatomic molecule you are not getting band gap and in diatomic molecule whenever you are reducing uh, you are making two the uh, two masses equal okay so you are getting uh, no band gap that means optical and acoustical branch is overlapping but since optical branch is there but in case of monoatomic lattice there is no optical branch so this is oh, why this is so because in both the cases you are making both the masses equal in monoatomic and diatomic okay so but here we matlab in diatomic molecules you have the optical branches but in case of monoatomic there is no optical branches so why this is so so please go through this this is very vital question and then the question was from quantum mechanics question quantum mechanics question was very easy uh, so uh, here they asked to uh, find the difference between the classical uh, quantum harmonic oscillator uh, classical harmonic oscillator and quantum harmonic oscillator and to draw the uh, distribution graph uh, as you know in classical uh, harmonic oscillator harmonic oscillator the probability of finding the particle on the extreme position is maximum and the probability of finding the particle in the uh, center okay so is minimum but in case of quantum harmonic oscillator if you draw the uh, ground state wave function then it will like this that means you are uh, probability of finding the particle in the center that is x equal to 0 is maximum and at the me, uh, extrema this is minimum so this opposite case is there in between classical and quantum harmonic oscillator so this why this is so okay so the last question was very deep so when quantum mechanics will convert or converge to classical mechanics okay and uh, you can expect a question that what is the basic difference between quantum mechanics and a classical mechanics okay so don't give a co answer like a uh, just a uh, uh, bsc first year student so think it in depth uh, in depth so what is the basic difference between quantum mechanics and classical mechanics in most of the questions matlab uh, i have experience that uh, they start the question uh, from this section what is the basic difference between quantum mechanics and classical mechanics and they expect a very qualitative answer not like you are saying that in quantum mechanics you are dealing with some quantum particles smaller size so this type of answer they do not expect oh, so please prepare this question very well so difference between quantum mechanics and a classical mechanics because lot of students are facing problem to answer this question okay uh, then a question was from nuclear physics and uh, you can say in this year the trend was on the beta decay in panel c okay panel c or you can say panel third panel last panel they definitely asked uh, this question to all the students beta plus decay and beta minus decay then draw the energy diagram of both beta plus and beta minus decay what is the difference you observe and why this difference is co coming up 
then this question was on the top what is muonic atom what is muonic atom and how it is formed in the outer environment basically they will ask you is, is this particle muonic atom can be formed in the free space it's not possible then why if not possible then how can you form this muonic particle in the extra or the extra space or the free uh, in the outer space in the outer space so this mechanism is there certain mechanism but it's not easy in the basic scale if you consider it's not easy question to answer so most of my student uh, most of my friends were faced this question okay so then a question was from uh, this question which of the above can be drawn in the free space so out of beta plus decay and beta minus decay which of the reaction can be occurs in the free space so thank you so much these are the question from uh, various uh, portion of physics uh, which are asked to smriti bhai during his drc scientist interview yesterday so hope you enjoy the session stay tuned with my channel thank you for your support thank you